holy son of God himself. Talking about happiness? Talking about thanksgiving? Talking about gratitude? <laughs> Love is the way I walk through. Yeah. And it can be only my own gratitude I earn. Yeah, no one has to give me anything. I, I earned it perfectly by saying, I have no need of this anymore. No need of what I think I am. I am as God created me. Thank you all for listening, for being here, for joining in on this glorious Thanksgiving Day. And I feel like all over on the West Coast with, with Perry, uh, that that by the time the show... You are listening live to ACIM Gather, a gathering for A Course in Miracles students and teachers. For more shows and information, visit acimgather.com. I am your lunch hour's host, Rev. Devin Devine, your conscious spirit coach in Cicerone to experiencing firsthand what is God. For more information about me and what I can do for you, visit openandclear.com. That's O P E N A N D C L E A R.com. While each day may have a different subject and approach, ultimately each and every single one of them have the same lesson that God would have you learn. To eventually open up and receive first-hand experience of what is truth, what is love, and what is that which is God. See what spirit has in store for us today as we tune in to this spiritual lunch hour broadcasting live from Utah, USA.
Yes, apparently today is set aside for thanks and and giving, I guess. Well, that's good. As long as we don't have to worry about the rest of the year. Jeez. And just thanks and give today. That's great. <laughs> but what's another reason we can have a day off of work in the mainstream, right? That's acceptable. Do I get a day off? No, no, I don't. I got kids year-round. Hello, this is Reverend Devin Jesse Byrne. Welcome to a little more getting in depth in this little place that we call the world. <laughs> yeah, I like this view. I, um, we're revolving around the planet up here in the video right now, so it's it's awesome. If you can't see the video, you gotta see me on Facebook or on many other platforms. What is today? I am forever an effect of God. As we read and talked about this a little bit yesterday, afternoon, <laughs> it was, no, it was, it was practically this morning. In fact, it was this morning, almost exactly 12 hours ago. So we like to be 12 midnight and 12 noon here hello welcome welcome thanks for being here so we're going to have two discussions on this it's really just one you can you can squeeze your <laughs> it's going to say like squint your eyes but for your ears you squeeze your ears and it would sound like it's one thing it's pretty amazing <laughs> But we're recording separately for these different uh, ideas, different places, different things. This course provided by Udemy.com, we have different three different segments that are talking about this lesson. Anywhere from 5 to 25 minutes last night was even 15. So you never know where it's going to get, what it's where it's going to go. It's it's a little offset, unusual for me as much as uh, doing a formal recording instead of just talking. <laughs> but it's more so you're behind the scenes and I am just pretty much starting the recording when I do. <laughs> and uh, what happens after that is all up to spirit. We just let it flow around here. Just let it happen. And it's exciting. Anyway, yeah, Link, uh, my son Link has a little bit more of a barking cough today. I guess he's got croup now. He's like a little puppy. I'm like, is there a little puppy in here? He's like, <laughs> don't know when to worry about those things, and uh, it's more so like. Do I ever? <laughs> Should I ever worry about those things? And as much as people would say, uh, yeah, you gotta start worrying about it when it's this, worry about it when it's that, worry about this time or how much, and if it keeps going, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know, I, I mean, yes, if it really is getting worse, then I'm obviously not healing my mind of it, but I am sure going to attempt to heal my mind Preferably, instead. And healing my son is a reflection of the same healing occurrence. Carly, you don't get the day off, you, you don't do it, you don't work. What do you mean? You always get the day off. Unless, what, you're talking about your, your own mind? And your struggle with your own mind? Is that why you don't get off? off with I mean sure but so, some people you know actually work and that you know not, not saying that yeah but you got a good just say that you got a good so let's go ahead and listen to this lesson we recorded last night
I'll show you the steps. You take them, and it's inevitable. These are the readings of the Lessons of A Course in Miracles. Only part of a very intensive course in which guarantees transcendent experiences of alternate realities. More information at openandclear.com Lesson 326 I am forever an effect of God. Father, I was created in your mind, a holy thought that never left its home. I am forever your effect, and you forever and forever are my cause. As you created me, I have remained. Where you establish me, I still abide. And all your attributes abide in me. Because it is your will to have a son so like his cause that cause and its effect are indistinguishable. Let me know that I am an effect of God. And so I have the power to create like you. And as it is in heaven, so on earth. Your plan I follow here. And at the end, I know that you will gather your effects into tranquil heaven of your love, where earth would disappear and separate thoughts unite in glory as the Son of God. Let us today behold the earth disappear as first transformed and then forgiven, fade entirely into God's holy will. So beautiful. I don't know why my voice got all re- robotic listening to that. Probably have to check up the actual recordings that way. So let's go ahead and get into this little recording discussion. It's not a recording. I'm recording it. <laughs> sure you are, Devin. So where am I hearing myself? Seriously, though. Hmm. 
These are the perceptual interpretations of the lessons of A Course in Miracles. The recognition of interpretation through the stages and the processing of awakening. This is only part of a much larger intensive course. Learn more at openandclear.com. Always loving when we're really confronting the essentially the law of the universe with this as far as why it all works, why the ten dimensions exist, why there it can be anything you want it to be. <laughs> And even as much as yesterday's lesson, uh, getting into that as much as even today's, yet we are finding that as much as we would like to insist that we are in a mistake, how how and whose mistake is that exactly? And this uh, actually kind of puts it on the responsibility onto the source of all that is, regardless of what, what you see yourself being. Now you think of yourself as, oh, you know, like God didn't put you in this world. God didn't create a world like this. And and yet, even while that's true, it's still a little bit of a mistake. I mean, <laughs> oops, a misunderstanding, <laughs> which is so easily done when we have this knowledge of good and evil. So easily done. Uh, we, we like to think that... You know, the guilt and shame and problems actually exist instead of recognizing that there is no reason to be guilty, there is no reason to feel shame, uh, there's no problem or uh, upset or anything, really, with what is actually occurring. Uh, But when you think there's a problem, when you think there's a difficulty, yes, in a way you can say that that's a dream, but it's more so in the sense of, You want it to be a problem for some reason and you are choosing to make it look that way. All right? So even as as we talked about a lot yesterday, you make up these images in the sense of uh, anything, really. It's not necessarily physical images, just an idea about someone. You're like, oh, I can't... You find out that your, your best friend was lying to you this whole time and yet you haven't talked to her yet and you just can't you can't get get up to go and to talk to her and you, you you can't see her right anymore you're like oh i just she's been lying to me this whole time i don't even know who she is anymore <laughs> because you know this third party told you she was lying right and that it was all a, a big hoax or something or other and you have this idea about the person now you can't see the person the best friend that you've had for years and that you thought you could trust, you thought you knew, you know, and you just can't see them because you actually believe in this idea. You're, d- you're distorting your image of them by believing an idea that someone else, well, not necessarily, shared with you about what they've been doing or lying to you this entire time. Regardless if it's true or not, you all of a sudden have this like blockage that you can't see the person clearly anymore. Even just as superficial as actually seeing people. I mean, we're not worried about this be getting all super metaphysical or anything right in this moment. But just to be able to comprehend them. Or let's say you were working with a person and you thought it was going well. And then they say something that all of a sudden you, you can't accept anymore. And you're like, oh, this isn't the person I thought they were. Oh, they're being rude to me or short with me. And, and I just can't accept who they are anymore or something. And, and you, you can't see them as the way you did. But really, with both of these examples, you actually had an image of them previously. And now you're, you kind of broke down that image. And regardless if you see a real, true image or not, which if you think it's another person, you don't. Uh, but essentially, you're still blind with ideas. And you're not actually seeing 
what it is that is actually there uh, in the sense of really just truly accepting the person as they actually are from the beginning of the entire existence. Now the same thing as we get into this more idea that I am an effect of God, we we like to water this down as far as Course Miracles students and we like to say and insist that uh, yes, but God is not responsible for what I'm doing, that I'm independent in a way from God, and that I'm, I am choosing to be in a dream, uh, regardless if that's just the ego I or even the Christ I going into a dream, that I am going into a dream, and God doesn't know about it. And as much as it's true, it, we got to definitely distinguish exactly if that's uh, like a consciousness we'd like to associate with the ego identity uh, and this idea that you uh, insist that God is thinking like you think you're thinking now and so you're like oh God's over there no bitch I'm not going to believe in your dream I'm way too cool for you and you're, you're just over there just suffering and in pain and you're like God why don't you help me and it's like uh, I don't go into your little world. I'm not going to go into that little thing. And it's not really like that. That When you give God a specific characteristic as an identity, it's almost impossible to comprehend. Uh, but in the sense of what God actually is, is just an absolute, eternal, infinite, all possibles, all variations of all that is. And so there is no fragmented perspective in him. Uh, he is all fragmented perspectives, and even to say him is a fragmented reference, uh, and, and it actually is not uh, <laughs> meant to be an association to a sex of any kind. Or even mentioning that it's God is a definition. It's really unnameable, undefinable, being so uh, infinite and eternal of every possible option of every variation of all that is, including trillions and trillions and trillions of what you call you right now is so much more you than even you can be and we're talking about whatever way you're calling yourself you now if you can even imagine this uh, getting a little idea of the, the vastness of what this means to get a, a tiny idea or to just look at one tiny world with one, one, one tiny person with these two tiny eyes is uh, as incomprehensible to the total essence of what that God is in the same way as you find that God thing to be totally incomprehensible to what you are. So to look into these tiny little ways, tiny little glasses that you call your life body thing uh, is as incomprehensible and almost impossible from the sense of what the totality essence is. So it's being so infinite and vast and, and, and expansive that it's not separate in any sort of way. So as soon as even it comes up with this idea that I am, even to have this Christ idea, as we talked a little bit about earlier, is this sense of fragmentation. And that's what the likeness of the Christ is, is, yes, an original separation idea. And as much as we like to say that it continued further, this sense of what is God's creation is this original I am of Christ. And then everything from that in which Christ had ideas of its own uh, are all of its creations. And we're talking about worlds and spiritual universes and physical universes and all, the, all different landscapes and ideas. And yet it remains to be ideas still today always ideas and it's actually the just imagery of the spiritual universe that gives it uh, structure of any sort but it's still the idea that makes it happen and is what it's happening so as much as we like to think that there is this idea of good and evil that there is right and wrongs in everything we do we project that onto even this idea that God fragmenting itself to the Son of God and and having the perspective that it could fragment itself also in its own way that God doesn't even know about, which is absolute joke, um, as if it's bad, as if it's not doing it also. 
But that's that's exactly the point here is that it is doing it. Like even this level confusion often is helpful to get defined with these ten dimensions and even just the first few if you recognize that the infinite total expanse of all that is is the zeroth dimension which is hand in hand with the tenth dimension it began with that first dimension which is Christ right so the entire existence began just with the perspective of simply perceiving its own existence like the total expanse of all that is doesn't have this perception separate from itself so if it was to look at itself it would be a sense of fragmented and that is referred to as the son of god the perceiver of all that is it's still one and the same and i can't say it enough it is god it is the same thing it's like as if you all of a sudden appeared with eyes right and looked at anything <laughs> To be all that is and then to recognize you are all that is, is to think within yourself. So God, and so the Son of God is a thought in the effect of what is the actuality of what is God. So as much as, uh, you know, details about all of this, still even as that sense of what, what is the purpose like why and what is the Christ's purpose and the function that Christ has and in that sense of exploration like even as what you've been perceiving it's gone into the spiritual universe and developed realities of all these different spiritualities and then developed this knowledge good and evil idea and in fact Christ was the God that walked with Adam in the garden and not so much the actual essence of what the true God is or the whole complete 100% God. And then in that idea, it had this knowledge of good and evil, this right and wrong, good and bad, now completely misunderstands the, the universe, and yet it still remains to be the universe. Like, it's not as if it's happening separate. It's not as if it's happening uh, somehow distorted or dysfunctional. It only seems that way by the perception of the cho choice, the choosing of this Son of God. So it has all the options to pick from. It's like, what? <laughs> Choose your weapon. And you got all this, the Christ just reaches out and grabs this idea, knowledge, good and evil, that there's an opposite to life, that there's an opposite, an absence of love, and, and essentially this is what it gets. This is what it's seeing. And it's not like so much as if it's a... Uh, a mistake it's just another way of perceiving it's one way of perceiving now when you say you don't like it when you say you don't want to be here now then you need to get out now then you want to get out that's that's the time you want to get out right because you don't want to be in it you don't understand it you don't know what's going on and so it's a little tricky but that's the beginning of when not so much you're actually getting out but when the christ chooses to be something different it really literally has to see itself in a completely different fashion and then the world becomes something now to say this you have far more authority than you like to admit you like to think of yourself as this individual person and that god is regardless if it's way too far subconscious in your mind or if it's something outside or something more in depth than what you're aware of it's still where you source from. It's still where you derive from. So your authority still remains, regardless if you actually recognize or admit it or not. you got to understand, this is not a mistake. This is simply a, a choice that now you're choosing not to enjoy. And you then call it a mistake because of that. Let's take this a little further. Hey, if you 
you've been inspired by these words, I would very much appreciate you giving back a little bit. It doesn't have to be by donation, but I do accept those. Thank you. But you can share this broadcast with your friends and family, or even on just social media. It's very much appreciated and does help spread the word and get to the people that we need to get to. It doesn't cost a thing, except maybe a close-minded friend or two. <laughs> well, for any case, thank you very much. saying here more robots less humans ain't no map beaker pop are you implying me Carla asks uh, it, it, Carla I don't know what you're specifically talking about what are the ten what are the ten dimensions uh, so it's something that we get into in this course but essentially it's the different ways of perceiving non-duality. Now, it starts and sources from non-duality as far as the totality of infinite unity of all that is, and that's then deriving from that. Even that idea that God did not, or I did not create myself, as the Course is referring to, often the Course is helping and assisting the fourth dimension, which is this independent ego consciousness that believes in time and the body to get out of and start to recognize its actual self as what is the Christ. And so it's actually speaking from the Christ perspective, which really is the initial let's say, sense of what perception is possible, where perception is possible. So then you, you get into, a, you can see that every saying just like really to sum it up and say anything's possible in a dream right so if we just say anything's possible in a dream then it's a somewhat of a classification of exactly where everything fits in as many religions have different definitions of heaven and of hells and of ideas and, and all this stuff uh, essentially it it all fits in somewhere in these say classifications or ideas, uh, which I refer to as ten dimensions or ten derivatives of the singularity, which many of us, like we reference to the physical world as three dimensional, it is in the same way that uh, understanding it, but it's not so much just drawing lines, as mathematics puts it, <laughs> but that it's even a holographic universe that is just representing everything you believe and as your expansion of this awareness is it opens up and expands through through this was jesus in the 10th dimension so no uh you actually can't um you can't so much uh what's the word interact with the third and fourth dimensions as jesus was uh when you're beyond the eighth dimension so you act well. You can, but it's it's not in person. So uh, he, his perspective, as he became aware and is teaching through a course of miracles of the first dimension, which is Christ. When you become aware of the totality and authority of what is Christ, that makes up and chooses all of the other dimensions. Then the power and authority of what refers to as miracles is possible in the fifth, sixth, and seventh dimensions, in which uh, you know we are already in all of these and we have this vast expansion of awareness and yet we're just so focused and obsessed right now and that's essentially what we want to train our minds is to break out of this obsession with insisting that we are a particular specific person and uh, a location and recognizing furthermore expressions of ourselves like if you think about it you know 
an all-powerful creator being of any sort being stuck in something it doesn't want to be doing, it's either up against something stronger than itself or it actually wants to be doing it. So there's got to be a different reason here than what many would say getting out of the dream infers. Usually getting out of the dream is actually a reference to the the dream that you have no authority here and you don't recognize who you are. That does have authority here. And so as far as uh, Jesus, the question there with that, uh, when he would have ascended to the heavens in whatever form we want to debate or not, if that occurred, would be moving beyond association to the physical world in this way and in that sense going into the 8th, ninth, and 10th dimensions. A lot of the ideas that a lot of people have about superhuman abilities is what is possible in these 5th, 6th, and 7th dimensions. Carla says, Something just occurred to me that I don't know what the Son of God in myself is. Well, that's good to admit. Then we need to, you know, a lot of people actually don't, I mean, we, we say this over and over again in this course, and yet it's okay. You know, as you're applying forgiveness, it will a bit make itself known and aware. I feel as if I don't have authority. I have given authority to others, so it's a cluster mess right now. Yeah, and, you know, in, in that sense of responsibility, like with life in, in many forms, not just you, um, we are developing and creating this entire existence by simply what we're choosing or wanting to happen. And yet those are coming from thoughts manifest uh, in the sense of even the feelings that were occurring that we're reacting from uh, are not necessarily coming from us. But in the sense of uh, having the authority and recognizing that authority and giving it to others, often, you know, you like to think of these other people as separate from you. So it's uh, a little more relaxing for you, or you don't have to worry about it so much. And and now you're attempting to gain your authority back, or to Indian give your, your gifts of authority that you've given to other aspects of yourself. But really the key is, it's not so much uh, gaining it back by paper, as government standing... Uh, or anything like that this this authority is is actually from recognizing you are them that there is a unification in everything it's not so much that they can do something that you would say no don't do that I am the authority here I am the master here uh, the authority is actually the decision they have as well to do that to be that so as much as the ego wants to take on this authority and say, yes, you're, you're wrong, uh, don't you know who I am, I am one with God, uh, it's, <laughs> it's uh, get, well, if you're one with God, you know why they're making the decision they're making. I don't know if it's the creamer I'm using or something. Man, I'm, I'm, every time I drink this coffee, I'm like getting this stuff in my throat while I'm caught up. Kyla, I'm a huge lesson coming on. I feel huge. Lesson. It's making me feel insecure and unsure of what is going to happen. So, Carla, you keep saying that you think it's coming on. I mean, it's here. So if you don't start practicing and applying it right now, you're not going to be ready for its coming or it's going to happen. And so, I mean, like the forgiveness, if you're not applying the forgiveness, if you're not trying to see past it right now, like it's not going to, I mean, it, <laughs> sure, it might get bigger, might get more on, might get, might be huge. And, and you're saying that 
the climax of it is coming or something. But in any case, if you're not applying it now, you're not applying it to the whole thing. So apply to it now and and quit saying and talking about it in that sense and start seeing past it. Forgiveness is surrendering the ability to see differences, meaning you don't know if something is for healing or not. Uh, you don't know if it's for something up or not or down. or You don't know the difference between healed or not healed. You don't know the difference between good or bad. Debbie, do you watch your mind? Well, I mean, in what way do I watch my mind? Because throughout the process, yes, there's watching the mind, watching mind in, in the sense of you, when you're trying to get out of the dream, you have to start a, trying to think in the fashion of aligning yourself with what is outside of the dream. And so if you don't, uh, or if you're not aware, so in the sense of watching your mind, being aware of what's going on in your mind, to align it or to make the direct decision to be in the awareness of what this, say, only thinking like Christ idea, then you need to, yes, watch your mind as much as you insist that there is a right or a wrong, but it is still an obsession with this right or wrong thing. Like in this idea, yes, there's a specific goal of awakening from the dream, so you have to watch your mind. Oh, how do you watch your mind? How do I watch my mind specifically right now? Well, in this sense, like, so when you have a goal of awakening or this ascension process, you have a, a goal means there's a right or wrong. You can go towards it or away from it, naturally. Oh, how does one watch their mind? Okay. <laughs> well, let me finish this. And so once you get this goal in mind, then you have to keep directing yourself do that. So in the awareness of watching your mind is that you have to make sure that every thought is going in that direction or every idea that you're having is going in that direction. Every belief you have is going in that direction or else you're going to be going in a different direction, right? So in that case, in that understanding, yes, there is a right or wrong. But as much as having achieved it and knowing absolutely who I am uh, thinking in the same fashion is completely different. That I'm not opposed to any sense of thinking because I am the boss of my thinking. And so it's not so much if it's right or wrong thoughts or good or bad thoughts or <laughs> any sort of thoughts. Is it, oh, is it bad that I think this or is it right that I think this? It's like, no, there's just the Christ and it is what it is. But if you have the goal of attempting to recognize this Christ, then yes, there is a right or wrong way in which you can understand it or reveal itself to you. Hang on. I think it's the cold air or something. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, so how does one watch your mind? As far as, I mean, there's a lot of teachers that talk more so on this sense of uh, superficial level. But in this way, as far as, yes, just simply becoming aware of every thought, opposed to thinking in the sense of going off on subjects of your mind, uh, or getting lost in your mind, or thinking about random stuff, or wandering into different areas. Like, it's more so just being aware. Not being aware, meaning uh, I have to be in this specific subject, but understanding and, and recognizing that while you're watching your mind, you, you don't get lost, you wander on purpose. So it's actually in this thoughts, just watching the thoughts... Meaning, oh, yes, I may be tolerant of mind-wandering and going off into these various subjects and not paying attention to what I'm doing. In no way do I want to imply that that's somehow wrong. Uh, it's more like, where am I going? You know, follow the piper. Am I hypnotized by the piper? Or am I, and which is okay. Or am I completely aware that I'm following the piper because it's fun? I just want to be doing this. 
we we often think like we come with tune it's like oh what was i just thinking about for the last 20 minutes i don't even know and then that's simply uh, not so much just tolerant of mind wandering but even just lack of awareness of the wandering like uh, as much as i would say that i uh, do what is considered wandering in my mind uh, it's not so much anything but deliberate i only go where i am deliberately attempting to go and I'm a, a deliberately attempting to think. I never ask myself anymore, you know, why am I thinking this? Or where did that thought come from? Or why do I feel this way? Because even when I have those questions, I answer them instead of continue to wonder. You know, it's like <laughs> you got it in your head already. It's already there, the truth of all of this. So... As we're coming up on the hour, we have to get this recording going and have this discussion, which... Let's go ahead and listen to the lesson one more time. Lesson 326. I am forever an effect of God. Father, I was created in your mind a holy thought that never left its home. I am forever your effect, and you forever and forever are my cause. As you created me, I have remained. Where you establish me, I still abide. And all your attributes abide in me. Because it is your will to have a son so like his cause, that cause and its effect are indistinguishable. Let me know that I am an effect of God. And so I have the power to create like you. And as it is in heaven, so on earth. Your plan I follow here. And at the end, I know that you will gather your effects into tranquil heaven of your love, where earth would disappear and separate thoughts unite in glory as the Son of God. Let us today behold the earth disappear as first transformed and then forgiven, fade entirely into God's holy will. The Advanced Teachings of A Course in Miracles Unavailable to those who have yet to achieve what it has to offer. Yet they are offered here as they become available. This is a part of a very intensive practice to learn more about what it has to offer. Visit openandclear.com. So essentially we can focus on this idea 
uh, which the last line, uh, just even the last part here, and separate thoughts unite in glory as the Son of God. So as much as like we have these different thoughts in our minds, right? And we talked about this before, but in the sense of you associate yourself to the thoughts that are occurring in your head. And you like to think of these all as separate thoughts. You know, you have positive thoughts and negative thoughts and right thoughts and wrong thoughts and good thoughts, your thoughts, their thoughts, thoughts of your kids, thoughts of dogs, thoughts of taxes, thoughts of different, all these separate different things. And you can even say and associate yourself to these thoughts. Oh, these are really the definition I have of myself in that fashion. Also, is it in the same way, God defines itself as the Son of God. And the Son of God defines itself as the spiritual universe. And what you're doing is hand in hand with the, the creations of your own self, thinking and believing it's actually you. But you have this idea that you like some of them and don't like some of the others as if they are separate. So in this sense, to get a little more specific or a different frame of mind here, in the same way as everything, as you are the Son of God and so am I the Son of God, this, the recognition that all the thoughts that are occurring in your mind are actually not separate thoughts. They are not different occurrences of thinking differently. Uh, they're not positive and negative. It's just simply thoughts. Like it's the one thought, really, that you even exist in a sense of separate self. So in the same way, when you come into that recognition and unite it, also is everyone else seemingly separate sons of God, separate uh, as in plural, sons of God, uh, different also are coming back together and uniting together in the fashion of simply the one Son of God in that same awareness. So, as much as we like to think God doesn't join us in our dream, uh, yes, the total essence of definition of what God actually is cannot separate or fragment its perspective into what your dream consists of. Yes, that's true. But God defines itself with its thoughts in its mind. And what are its thoughts in its mind? You. You are a thought in the mind of God. And in everything you do, regardless if it's dreams or misunderstandings or holy, happy, lovely heaven places, it makes absolutely no difference. You cannot do anything on your own as far as saying separate from the actual truth of what God is. It is in every variation, every possible option of all that is. So in, regardless if you see or believe this world to be the way it is as separate fragmented selves, it remains to be the truth still. Regardless if you see it as united, connected souls, the truth remains to be the truth still. Regardless if you see only the Son of God in all aspects of your mind, regardless it's still the truth, regardless truth, regardless the truth, <laughs> the truth remains to be the truth. And in, in every direction, it doesn't so much matter of what you say the world is, what you say heaven is, what you say the truth is, and, and somehow fragment it from other truths or other worlds or other heavens or other ideas and thinking that you still have this association to even understanding heaven with separation ideas. It, it does get a little confusing because of this, making it so complex. But essentially, it remains to actually be the same one thing still. In like heaven, regardless if you see different things in your heaven and see different places in your heaven, have different family you're with in your heaven, uh, essentially, it's the same one heaven. Just like we'd say, well, we're on the same one planet. You might see different trees outside. Some people might be snowing uh, right now. Some people might never see snow in their entire life in their little planet. But it's still the same planet, right? It's in that same sense, even in that idea of having a fragmented or different perspective on the planet. 
and uh, which makes sense physically, it doesn't so much make sense when you get into this heaven idea where it's unifying, and then we actually think in association to bodies or obsessed, easier to understand, if you're obsessed with physical separation ideas, and then you try and understand heaven and the unification of Christ in separation ideas, it does seem like there could be trillions of different kinds of heavens, just like there's trillions of different kind of people. Because we're all wanting different things. I mean, we don't all want gold paved roads, and we don't all want seven virgins, and we don't all want, you know, whatever we think of as heaven. But essentially, what we're trying to get and what we're attempting to achieve still remains to be the one thing. What would happen if you did have everything in your heaven? Well, everything you ever wanted and complete satisfaction? Well, it would be the complete satisfaction and the complete happiness and the complete love that you would have. Regardless if you see it in that separate version or not. Regardless if you see it as bodies or images or not. So the actual heaven is not so much the imagery but the achievement in which the imagery brought about. This is occurring right now. You see heaven right now, and yet you're seeing it as if you're in your own little world. Now you might think there's a whole bunch of people in your little world, but it still remains to be the same idea. And this is the basis of what you believe, you desire, and you think. It naturally is in all of this occurrence of everything that's happening. That while you're seeing this thing, this thing you call world, this body stuff, this imagery, you are still seeing only what's in your mind. That you can't actually see something that is outside of yourself. So you're becoming more and more aware as you keep applying this sense of forgiveness, keep opening up this, this letting it go, this <laughs> letting yourself be, letting things be, and letting yourself, if, it's be, if you're in pain, you're letting yourself be in pain. If you're in pleasure, you're letting yourself be in pleasure. If you're seeing separate stuff, you're letting the separate stuff come out. If you're seeing this together stuff, you're seeing the together stuff come out. If you're burping on microphone, then you set letting the burp, burping come out. <laughs> Whatever it is, the idea that you can discern between differences is the problem. If you want a whole nother world, you have to recognize you are in a whole nother world. You can't discern if you're in it or not. If you want to say, say or think and look at, you know, I'm, I'm in what I want to be or out of, or in the dream or I don't want to be in the dream and I need to change this and you have this ability to tell if you're in a dream or not in a dream or if you're in heaven or not in heaven, this is the misunderstanding where forgiveness actually needs to be applied. That you... If you actually forgive this idea, you cannot tell the difference between heaven and hell. You cannot tell the difference between earth and heaven. You can't tell the difference between what is God and what I am. You can't think of a, it as separate. So in this same sense of being an effect of God, always and forever, meanings as much as you're accepting responsibility for all that you're seeing, all that you're doing, all that you're being, everything going on in the world is my fault because I am one with God. And as you're aligning with this actuality of what God is, you start to recognize and see that as I think, it becomes so. As I believe, I apply to my world. Why? Because I want to. What is the sense of desire? That literally the existence of being able to choose 
anything. Is there a right or wrong with what I'm choosing? Absolutely not. There's nothing but you. How could you be wrong or right? Keep up the good work. Keep allowing yourself to be what you are and have a beautiful, miraculous day. Thank you for being here. I very much appreciate you and your time to participate here. I hope you feel what I am giving you back in return. You are very much appreciated here. Welcome in my life. Happy Thanksgiving. Yes, thank you for being here. I was going to get to your comments in just a moment. As I <laughs> am exporting this file, hopefully. There it is. Thank you for being here. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Well, I didn't realize it was eight minutes over here. Nice. Have a good one. Just more.